In an earlier video, I was talking about having to make up some spacers to put my hairpins on. So what I did is I had some old fine threaded uh, 9 sixteenths, I know 5 eighths bolts, uh, two inches long. So I uh, chopped the heads off, ran my, all, my uh, die on them, the thread uh, chaser, and, uh, and made up a stud. And I'm getting my spacers built. Um, in the meantime, I've got a couple of uh, uh, all thread nuts, those extension nuts, putting all thread together with coming in fine threads. I'm going to use them to make sure everything works while I'm getting the chrome spacers built. So um, that's where I'm at. Here's the good old chop saw. Boy, the sun's bad today. You can see the heads that I cut off and the other, all, the other bolt with the thread chaser on it right there. So now I'm going to do this side, adjust it. As you can see, i got to run these, these in about oh, almost to the end, like the other side. And then i got to put that all thread in there where the heme rod joint is right now. So I'll take all that apart and adjust it up, couple, an Allen wrench bolt up there, and just screw everything in until I get it to all line up real good. Okay, there's my little all thread that I made up out of that uh, threaded bolt. So it's going to thread in there. I chased the threads real good, cleaned it up. So that's where that's going to go. I'm going to go about halfway in with it, and then the spacer will go the rest of the way. And then the heme rod will butt in there and have some adjustments. So you can see i got to go in quite a ways to get it to line up. And that will all be taken up on this end over here where I have lots of uh, thread. I like to get that engaged more. You can see from this with the stud in there, that's and the uh, heme rod in sitting behind it. That's all the engagement I had. That's why I'm putting the spacer in and, and adjusting everything all the way in so that I have good contact inside all the threads for strength. Going ahead and remove that cap screw right there. It's kind of a shoulder bolt, it fits a recess real nice. So I'll take that out, raise this side up, and screw that uh, heme, heme rod joint back in. That's what I'm talking about right there. So we'll just loosen the nut up. I'm not going to bore you with screwing that all the way in, but you can see what I'm doing there. I'm going to stop right there with it so that I still have some, about a quarter inch, but fine adjustment uh, when I finish uh, finished putting it all together. Then I'll make the spacer in the back to fit that quarter inch of play here. So I have some adjustment, and you can see by how long that was on the other one, that I got plenty of thread engaged in the uh, hairpin there. So I got these two adjusted in and you have to adjust them uh, either in or out, top or bottom, to get the angle to line up back here. I'm pretty close, but because I don't have the motor weight and the tranny weight and the tires on this thing, I really can't get the final adjustment because my spring's going to compress, and that means the front the front axle is going to go up towards the frame, and that's going to change this angle back here. So once all that's put together, then it's a uh, fine adjustment on the ground, weight on the car, everything that has to go with it. And then that uh, as it pivots up and down, as the springs pivot, the axle actually rotates in this radius from that bolt to the front. Not much. It's probably only going to have a maybe an inch travel, inch and a half, something like that, spring travel. So it's not too bad. It's not, it's not much as, as far as preloading the axle. 